What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. And this week, we're jumping into another episode of the Paranormal Pool Party. Do 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 do. Royalty free surf music. Yeah. Yeah. We have a guest this week who I feel like is an expert on paranormal activity, which is the best because I'm not. Uh, <laughs> That's what your business cards say. Right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> paranormal activity aficionado. Yeah. It says host, actress, paranormal activity expert. Clark Wool. Hello. Thank you guys so much for having <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. Thank you for being here, especially for like, I feel like an episode that I didn't have much time to prep. We just got back from our live show in Austin at yeah. RTX, which was so fun. Thanks to anyone who was there. We played like a Price is Right style game. Oh, cool. Game. Yeah. That sounds so fun. I literally ran around the room and did jump kicks. It was a lot of fun. Nice. It was yeah. very, very I good. I was pumped. Yep. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we flew home yesterday and watched... Paranormal Activity 2, which I had never seen. Mm -hmm. You had seen. I had seen, but it's been quite a while Mm -hmm. since I had seen it. And I remember uh, we discussed this a little bit before we started rolling. It being like my least favorite of at least the original trilogy. I think 4 has some like. 4 is uh, bad. Oh, yeah. Really bad. (laughs) Ooh, okay. I'm excited for that. Yeah. How does. Okay. So how does the continuity or how does the series go? Because it's complicated, right? Because there's one, two, three, four. And then. And then a spinoff okay. called the Ghost. Uh, I'm sorry, spinoff called the Marked Ones. Okay, and then it's five, but five is called the Ghost Dimension. And okay. you're saying it's five because it stays in the continuity of the first Correct. four, and that and that uh, fifth one, the Marked Ones, does not. It's a well. It does. It, it absolutely works in the bigger universe. Okay, uh, but it does not focus on Katie and Christy and their lineage. Got it. it okay. That's not the main story, but okay. it absolutely works in the bigger story. Cool. Got it. That's so confusing. Why wouldn't they just call it? F- well, I guess because, it is because it's yeah. not. Because yeah, it's a spinoff. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's confusing. I've never seen that Ghost Dimension one. I didn't know that it was uh, part of the story. I thought it was another one. Yeah, one-off. it's it was really frustrating for me, too, as a Paranormal Activity fan, because mm-hmm. I felt like the Ghost... I'm sorry, I felt like the Marked Ones was a return to form. It's I really like it. There's some great scares in there. It's an interesting take on the story. It does fit into the bigger picture, like we said. And so... Um, you know, my issue and the mythology really starts here in, yeah. in part two. But my issue was like they built this really awesome mythology that they explore in three. I know no spoilers because you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> um, and then four was not four f- feels very rushed. It doesn't feel like it ha- it's cohesive. Um, but the marked ones was so good that I was like, OK, five slash ghost dimension is going to be the the final installment in this series so that they can bring it back Mm -hmm. and ultimately it was just too little too late and it doesn't really it's i mean it's not as in my opinion it's not as bad as four okay um but it's just like it's just like (laughs) meh it's just nothing it's meh okay you know aren't they making another one yes i don't know the true i don't know like if it is a reboot i don't know if they're I have no idea what the content is, but yes, they're yeah. making another one. They're always making another one, no matter what we're talking Man, about. Man, I thought it was done after five. Yeah. I really, really did, uh, but I was wrong. I'm yeah. kind of surprised. I mean, I guess because they're so probably relatively cheap to make. Yeah. Why not For make sure. one? You know, it's probably going to make more than it costs to, to produce, so... Who knows? But yeah, this one we're getting all kinds of lore and stuff. And that's kind of why that that's the stuff I enjoyed in this one Mm -hmm. is it kind of gave me like saw vibes where the saw sequels are constantly adding to the lore and making the previous movies more complicated because of the lore it's adding in like, oh, but you didn't know this was going on this Mm. whole time and you didn't know this was why. So it explained, this movie explains a lot of the things that happened in the first one, which I thought was kind of fun. Yeah, and I always just kind of associate Saw and Paranormal Activity as, uh, I don't know, they're always side by side in my head because they're side by side in the evolution of the horror genre because like Saw dominated that 
early 2000s, mm-hmm. that, that decade. And then it kind of passed the torch, I think, mm-hmm. to Paranormal Activity. Yeah, I think yeah, that's fair. By the time the, the first one had a, the first Paranormal Activity had a wide release, Saw was really winding down. Sure. And, and taking were, over October, which was Saw, like if it was yeah, Halloween, right. it's that was, a, that was a tagline. If it's Halloween, it's Saw. Yeah. And then Paranormal Activity comes around. And did and, the same thing. Exactly. And goes, nope, okay. this is our holiday now. That's so, right. Yeah, because yeah. Paranormal Activity had the same thing where it was yearly releases. Yes. Uh, two, three, four came out back to back to back pretty quickly Mm -hmm. yeah for sure i think it was 10 11 12 Mm -hmm. that they came out do we want to just kind of go through the movie and we'll just i'm gonna take these can i can i ask a question before we do that please Uh um (laughs) do you guys like the first one i do okay so you guys were on board with the first one you enjoy the movie and all of that stuff yeah Mm -hmm. i saw the first one like before any of the sequels came out and i was like a big fan of what it did and uh yeah i've always been a defender of it yeah Uh, same i really really like the first one i thought you were gonna be like that first one fucking sucked no 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 no. (laughs) i would never say that uh the reason i ask is because i feel like you know, there were like, especially as a horror fan and, and when you're talking about it, when these movies were coming out and people I would talk to who were like, I didn't like the second Paranormal Activity movie. And I was like, oh, did you like the first one? And they're like, no. <laughs> and I, I was like, so, OK, oh, yeah. and then this is not for you. Like, yeah. I, I think that that's important when you're watching something like this is to know, like, if you're not on board with this filmmaking style, this tone, because, um, you know, the tone of these movies really matters. It is like. It is slice of life. It's like the are these people likable? Are they not likable? You know what I mean? So it's like if this isn't your bag from the start, like it's not gonna get better for you. <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, I don't think we would be devoting a month to these if Fair. we were not into Fair. them. Sure. But yeah, lots of people do say they're they're boring. Right. Right. Which like for me, I'm you know, it's 90 minutes. I can just like live in this world for 90 minutes and watch these people do this. Like, yeah. I mean, Big Brother's a thing right? Yeah. where people have yeah. like, 24 hour streams of just watching strangers and there are no ghosts in there. I so. do wonder more broadly, like mm-hmm. if these movies hit now, because obviously reality television was a thing at the time. But like if these movies came out now where all we do is watch live streams and Twitch and yeah. and videos on our phone and this is me walking around my house and it's boring. Like if if it would resonate, you know, because it would kind of like predated that style of, you know, uh, digital content. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think that's really it. I noticed that last time I was watching it. I was like, oh, this is, we do this now. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder if that would help or hurt it. Exactly. You know, I don't if know. it would be like people are more used to that kind Kind of uh, pacing and that kind of like just observant mm-hmm. kind of thing, or if it would be like we've seen that like this is nothing, this isn't interesting, or if if like a studio low key like made a paranormal activity movie but didn't say that it was a movie and released it on twitch they or released of, it on that kind of you know? happened with that lonely girl 15 do you remember oh yeah that was like a that, YouTube. that was like 2000s early 2010s yeah. there was a youtube channel where it she was a a vlogger and kind of among like the first wave of youtube style mm-hmm. vloggers and her channel slowly got weird eventually people realized she was an actress and it was a fake person and my name is Bree I'm 16 um I don't really want to tell you where I live because you could like stalk me well what you need to know about my town is that it's really boring like really boring that's probably why I spend so much time on my computer but yeah you kind of mentioned slice of life and I feel like one of the first negative adjectives I associate with slice uh, slice of life films is boring. Like, yeah. I would not, um, let me preface, I'm not comparing this to uh, an Italian neorealist <laughs> film because it's certainly not, but that's the same idea of we're just watching people live yeah. their lives. Right? And a lot of people think those films are very boring yeah. too. Um, I like neorealist stuff. Oh, I thought, no, you hate French New Wave. French New Wave. <laughs> it's not good. I don't like French New Wave. Um, I get Same. why it's important, but like, fuck that. Yeah, uh, not my thing either. No. <laughs> uh, Italian neorealism is nice. It's like, you know, or I'm watching a guy and his dog walk around and it's kind of nice. Yeah, hear that, French people? The Italians are better. Fight now. <laughs> oh, man, I'm for our both love. of them. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
You, you mentioned if the characters are likable is a big thing. And I do think that that's something that this movie has up over the first one. Interesting. Just because the first one, you only have two characters and half of them fucking suck. Mika. 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 God, he's annoying. Mika's the he's, worst. He's gr- like the actor's great yeah. so at good. that role. Yes. But that character, okay. holy shit. So, so <laughs> here's, I want to bring this up because, and by the way, I want your audience to know, Paranormal Activity, the first three, is my favorite horror trilogy. Oh, oh cool. cool. So Great. when you guys, when I saw uh, Chelsea on your uh, on your Twitter that you were going to do a whole month, I was like, can I come on? Please, can I come on? <laughs> and I even, I even said, I'll do Paranormal Activity 2 because that's the one of the first trilogy that nobody likes, but it's actually my favorite. Yeah, that's, nice. I'm so, so glad you're um, here for this one. <laughs> but as far as like Mika and the, the likability question goes, you know, um, a lot of people like, uh, I actually, I agree with you. He is like the worst, but also how many, at least for me, I've had so many antagonistic boyfriends who act exactly the same way yeah. to me. And you see it played out even more with the dad character in this yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's really like, it's very telling. And I think it's cool that that they these guys traditionally play um, such jerks, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and because there has to be one non-believer in the family. But I do think it's really important that in the first two, the non-believer is a man yeah, telling his wife or girlfriend, you're wrong. What you are experiencing is not happening. Mm-hmm. And um, that is my biggest like takeaway and thesis of these first three is this, these are movies about gaslighting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I we we were kind of talking about that while we were watching this last one. So I was like, oh, it's fun that it's another Yet another paranormal activity movie and another horror movie. This is such a common trope where it's like the man is the logical one. The man, oper- it's like reason and logic and I need evidence, which real realistically, yes, that's a good way to operate. But in these, in the <laughs> universe of these movies, it's like, yeah, it's very purposeful. I think that we've got these dudes who don't listen to <laughs> what the, the women in their lives are trying to say to them. And and there's even the scene of them all together in the backyard in the mm-hmm. pool where like the dudes are commiserating over like, oh, these crazy these sisters. These crazy have women. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, apparently we have a ghost. A couple pots fell off our uh, pot hanger thing. Oh, no, you definitely have a ghost. Straight to ghost. Yeah. Straight to go. It's the most logical. What I love about that is, and why I think it's so like upsetting, is is because these girls are talking about, or these women are talking about trauma from their childhoods. Yeah. yeah. So so obviously we know that the trauma from their childhoods is maybe there was a presence that followed them around and it scared them and it tormented them or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But you could easily read the trauma as something very different sure, right. and yeah. the idea of Ooh. believing survivors and the idea of believing women when they say this happened to me this is real we just saw it in in 2018 Halloween that mm-hmm. was Jamie yeah. Lee's whole you know like so, through line is I know this is real stop telling me it doesn't matter mm-hmm. stop telling me that my fear is not justified and that's part of the reason why I love I find the second movie so scary and really like heartbreaking yeah. because I, I Chris Christy is such, to me, a really sympathetic character. Um, and I love seeing the dynamic between Katie and Christy and then Christy and her husband and so on. Yeah, I think that's horror such is like a common trope. It is. I think horror is like where is um primarily where you see that kind of style of relationship. We just watched Insidious for a common oh, yeah. track. Yeah, and that's there. all like Patrick Wilson being so handsome and so dense. Yeah. <laughs> just, just not listening to his wife. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Although I will say Daniel is funnier than Mika. Yes. Daniel has some lines where it's like got actual laughs. I, I, I like Dan. I, I like, like Daniel. Daniel. Like yeah. I like that character. I in fact looked up, we were talking about before we started rolling about looking up what the cast and the crew had done. Oh yeah. And I looked him up and I mean he certainly like first of all he looks completely different. He Wait, doesn't really? have a goatee, he has much longer hair. Oh. Like yeah. Uh, and but but I, I thought because I think this perfor- this is something that's so interesting about these movies is I think these performances are actually 
actually really good. Yeah, yeah. they but are. But for whatever reason, like, it doesn't necessarily translate to these actors going on to be like, you know, oh, I know who they are. They're on that show. Or yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah, the cast is, like, even Katie Featherston. Is yeah, like, she's great. She's so good, but she's not They're in all a really lot good. Of things. Yeah. yeah, and I know she's directing now, which is oh, great. great. Cool. And, like, kind of generating her own work, which I think is awesome. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, like, the cast has worked since yeah but but it's just like yeah I just I specifically with that dad I was like he's so great in this role yeah like, I don't know it's same <laughs> way it's like this and the um both casts of the unfriended movies are all like really really mm. good and mm-hmm. I think because that's also a found footage type thing I wonder if it's because it feels so real and they feel so natural that it doesn't register as like they're good actors they're it actors. registers well, a lot of people say the, that the acting in unfriended is bad i don't I, think I, it I is strongly disagree. i very yeah, I much don't either i think yeah. it's i think that they're annoying teenagers but they're, they're playing it, it very well exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah it's funny though i <laughs> during this movie we both were like we kind of miss mika because <laughs> there's all this shit going on at night that we see being caught on camera and we're like oh, yeah. you know who would be up at Five in the morning, going through all the footage and all of the sound waves is Mika. Mika yeah. would catch all of this stuff. Well, you know what, though? <laughs> that's so interesting because, like, even I guess it's about halfway through the movie, but maybe a little bit later. Uh, the women, Christy and um, and Allie, they 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 literally go through the footage and mm-hmm. show Daniel. They're mm-hmm. like, "Do you see this?" Yeah. And he, to their face, once again, is like, "That didn't happen." Yeah. He's like and the it's wind. so weird. And it's just like it's so. So, I mean, I, this, again, I just love, I think this is aged so well if you look at it as a metaphor talking about those kinds of things. That's, yeah. You know, like I am showing you evidence and somebody goes, that's not true. Yeah. That's, that's not true. That's such an interesting read that I can't believe I didn't think of before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and that what this was ri- uh, co-written by Christopher Landon. Yes. Who did yeah, Happy Death Day. Let's Death talk Day. about Christopher Landon. Yeah. I've talked to him in person uh, uh, at that premiere for. Oh yeah. Uh, or it wasn't a premiere, but it was a screening for Happy Death Day to you, and he was just so awesome. So smart. And I talked to like all the people in his cast and crew, and everyone was like, "Christopher Landon is great." I felt like I was with my family on set. So he just. He just seems like a really cool guy. He is so smart. Like he's such a. I've interviewed him before and um and watched a lot of his work. And he, I just think he is so freaking smart. <laughs> and you know, so I. But he's important because you were talking about earlier with the um the mythology. Mm-hmm. We start to build in mythology in Paranormal Activity Two. We hint at it a little bit in the first one, but like we're really going back and exploring what this really means. And I think that Christopher Land is the through line th- for the quality of these movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love that he introduces this this history of mothers and this history of, um, you know, wealth and this history of, um, of trauma for these little girls and the sister. I mean, it's just so like, it's like, yes, this is how you continue this franchise without having it be, Oh, and then there's a ghost in another house and we just set up cameras. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I can even, like, talking about that, I can see it's definitely his influence because in Happy Death Day to You, he does the same thing. He kind of builds out that mm. world in a way where it, like, builds on things that we already saw mm. previously yes. while also moving forward with new ideas. And so, yeah, I can definitely That's see That's interesting because it's kind of the same. Yeah, you're right. Because in that, that second Happy Death Day, you have, oh, the power outage in that first one that kind of seems random is then explained right. in that second one. Yeah. And it just kind of adds to the texture of the first one, which that's is like, really Kind of like with the picture. And, yes. Uh, yes. In, in the first paranormal activity, they find that burnt picture and you're like, oh, it's burnt because it was in that house fire. Uh-huh. And then in this movie, it's like, oh no, it's burnt because yeah. it was part Ooh. of a ritual. Dude, I... I thought that that <laughs> ending of this, so so essentially, because if you, we have a lot of people who, you know, they'll, they'll listen to this and they don't necessarily want to watch the movie because sc- I get it. They're scary. They're <laughs> scary. You should watch scary. them. But yeah, uh, <laughs> essentially it's, they realize, so it's it's Christy who is Katie's sister from the first Paranormal Activity. Yes. She, who was mentioned, not by name, but that she mentions she's her mentioned, sister in right. the first movie, yeah. And basically at the end of this movie, Christy, or not Christy, she doesn't have any choice in this, which is an interesting um, decision to mm. make script-wise. But uh, 
her husband and stepdaughter yes. decide on her behalf to like. Well, even the stepdaughter is against it. That's yeah. right. No, it's yeah. just the, the dad the is like, no, we're Who's doing like, it. It's my decision. That's right. And I'm after he's decision. blown off Martine. Yeah. yeah. After another woman mm-hmm. being yeah. like, hey, I'm telling you something's going on. Yeah. And he's like, you're fired. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my we can God. talk yeah, about that the later. The zero tolerance <laughs> spooky yes. policy. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, the dad is essentially like, nope, it's my house. And we get get a more like macho man kind of shit like we see with Mika in that first song where it's like, it's my house, it's my demon problem, I'm going to fix it. So he decides, I'm going to transfer this demon from my wife to my wife's sister. Because it has to go through a blood relative. And it has to go through a blood relative. Uh, we learn all that from Martine, but that's fucked up. Yeah, it's yeah. so but messed so up, right? Because yes, this movie takes place before the first one. This is a prequel that takes place what, like six months it's, or like yeah. a few months before Kinda, the first one. Yeah, but th- then it all connects. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, near the end of this, it reaches the point to where the first one began. Yes, and then it reminds you, hey. This this was the first movie. They show you a few oh, shots, man. and then it comes back to new stuff to be like, <laughs> yeah. and just a little bit of it's ending. Like, we're gonna rogue one this shit. I love <laughs> oh, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the Darth Vader fight at the end, and it's we're going back to that first movie. That yeah. was so great. I feel like yeah, I'm just so I I have such an appreciation for the first one that this whole second one because it's so closely intertwined. We're having moments like fucking like Seinfeld style. Woo! Like if Kramer comes in, I'm like when Mika shows up, we're like Mika. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's kind of fucked up to think if you put this all in order, the spiral that the that Christy goes down in this one and that Katie like so rapidly Inherits, does yeah. in the in the first one is because like their partners, like Katie's boyfriend and uh, Christy's husband, don't listen to them and then exacerbate the problem. And then instead of fixing it, they just like pick at it and make it worse and then ultimately passes it on to like another woman to do it. Yeah, you're right. It is like really, there's some really fucked up gender politics in mm-hmm. these, which is a lot of fun. And I think it's interesting to kind of, um, because maybe on the surface, it's it's not like an explicit reading, I think, to get from these. I think you have to do a little bit of, um, you know, like those themes are there, but I think you have to, it, it's not like so explicit on the surface. It's not like this is a movie about it's women not the purge being listening. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good. Well, and I will say so um, part of the reason I saw this movie in the theater, mm-hmm. um, or like in one of those demand it screenings. So it was oh, like cool. early, you know, and they used to do them here in LA at the Arclight Hollywood. They would put food trucks out there. Ooh, they would like, nice. Blumhouse fun. would do like a big party. Party, essentially and it was for fans it wasn't like a you know it wasn't like an industry party right um but I saw this in the theater and this movie scared the shit out of me it's such a good and theater movie good it's such a good theater movie yeah. but like this one in particular the scene at the basically the climax at the end uh in the basement mm-hmm. yeah when when <laughs> it's dark and like mm-hmm. all of that stuff is happening I was so, it was working for me. And the reason that I bring it up is because I thought to myself, I really like was like, why did this scare me so much? Like, why did this get under my skin so much? It's, and and I think it's, it's as you say, it's not the explicit um, politics of it. But for me, I had to like think about, I think it's, it's a challenge to think about what scares you. Mm -hmm. and so when you're so unsettled by something and you're just like but why Mm -hmm. and then when I started unpacking it and I started thinking about it and I thought about the first thing that came to me was the idea that Hunter this baby was always in trouble Mm -hmm. and it set me on edge like immediately oh yeah we meet this baby right off the bat and you're like oh fuck there's a baby it's the first shot like welcome home Hunter exactly and you're just like oh god this baby like (laughs) is it what's gonna happen to this baby so I was immediately on edge then but then as I started thinking about it and as I started exploring it a little bit more I do think that those themes are the reasons that this unsettles me so much I think so too yeah like subconsciously and that's such a sign of a good script a good allegory metaphor where it's not you know we're not being hit over the head with it right um but it's there if you want to dig into it I'm sure if you asked any of the writers they would say that that's at least a little bit of you know what they what what they were considering when they wrote this and I I think it's interesting too that you know we have a screenplay by three dudes um and I think we would both agree that it's you know we do want to see more you know if we're doing a story about women and women's um 
you know, women's issues, like women's stories. We would ideally like to see them written by by women. But I think it's also um, important to kind of look at when we do have a screenplay written by guys that genuinely feels empathetic and feels like there's some thought put into it and isn't like trying so hard to be like, we're dudes writing these women's stories. Aren't we hashtag woke? I think it's, I don't know. I think that's something that I kind of appreciate. I think it it shows a an ability to empathize with others and be able to write from someone else's perspective in a way that doesn't feel like like it's trying so hard. Well, like Chris Landon, yeah. yeah, and Chris Landon, I think I want to say is the is the sole screenwriter on the third movie, mm-hmm. which is um, and this is not a spoiler. It's a prequel, mm-hmm. so it's about Katie and Christy when they're children. Okay, and so you meet their mother, you meet their grandmother. Oh, mm-hmm. and you even get a hint that they're like, you don't want to end up like mom. Yeah, you? Exactly. and I was like, I, I wrote like question mark, exactly. question mark. I was like, what the fuck is that? And so Chris yeah. Landon, I think is I wasn't in the room obviously, but you know, I did do a little reading with the director. Director and he he claims that a lot of the movie there's an outline but a lot of it is improvisation. Mm-hmm. Obviously, some of these effects like you have to build up to and build around. But I, I would argue, I would assume um, and probably bet that a lot of that empathy is coming from Chris Landon because mm-hmm. you see it so on display in the third movie. Yeah, yeah. and the Happy Death Day franchise. I mean, of course, mm-hmm. you know I I love the women in that too, and I always yeah. As much as I, it's weird. I feel so equally like we need more women writing women's stories. I feel feel like that and then also I I love the idea of other you know people writing stories that aren't necessarily from their you know drawn from like their specific life experiences but show an empathy and show an understanding of how someone else could feel if that makes sense like there's definitely situations where someone shouldn't be trying to write from a perspective that they're absolutely not qualified to write from but something like this where it's a bit more metaphorical and a bit You know, I don't know if that makes any sense or not. The weirdest fucking example of that, though, is Rosemary's Baby. Yes. It's so, like, empathetic, and it was written by a fucking monster. Well, Ira Levin wrote the book. That's true. And also, if you read the book, I just read the book, and um, the book is the movie. Oh, okay. So I wouldn't give Roman Polanski that much credit for the words and the material on the page. Oh, cool. And if that you makes also, Ira Levin also, <laughs> yeah, and Ira <laughs> Levin also wrote um, uh, Stepford Wives. Okay. And so, so yeah, that I the original, not the correct, <laughs> yeah, correct, not, not the, the remake. So yeah, remake. so I would, I would actually credit Ira Levin more with mm. the empathy of okay. Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. So uh, this movie, I don't know. Do we, do we want to talk about it? Uh, kind of more linearly. Yeah, sure. Because it follows. Yeah, like we said, it follows uh, Christie's. No, it follows Katie's sister, Christy, and her family. Uh, and I guess this is kind of like the ground zero for the stuff that happened in the first movie. Like we said, the third one's going to go back and explain that childhood stuff. But as far as this uh, more acute incident yeah. of demonic possession. Even like the scene where, <laughs> again, there's another paranormal pool party in this movie. There's everyone, everyone's oh, yeah. legit pool party yeah. Yeah. in this movie. Everyone's swimming in their nice ass pools in these movies. You know, some people said that in the first movie, they were at this pool. No, they weren't. Did they have their own pool in I the thought, first movie? Because I'm not sure now. Why would they? Because people commented and were like, I think it's, uh, they're no. swimming in the sister's pool. Mm. Why would they write that seems weird. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. Or it could just be like the houses in San Diego in Carlsbad all, they look, all the look the same. Yeah, they all look the... the <laughs> Maybe more of that. Although this house, I will say, looks much less dated yeah. than the yeah. house in the first one. Yeah. This one looks like, oh, I wouldn't... Like this... I If I went over someone's house and it looked like this one in the second one, I'd be like, okay, that's normal. If I went over someone's house and it looked like that one in the first <laughs> one, I'm like, dude, you got to remodel, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one. Yeah, less world market in this <laughs> yeah, house yeah, yeah. in this second movie. Yeah, um, but yeah, we even have like the inception of Mika. We see the like fucking little light bulb over his head. Uh-huh. Like, I should get a camera. Mm-hmm. Yes, I love that because so Daniel funny. here has a camera, and Mika comes over and sees it. It's like, oh, is that HD? Ooh, and then mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we see that that first clip. We even have movie. him being like, it. "I bet you guys fuck in front of this camera too," and, <laughs> and that's a thing in the first one. That whole movie is him <laughs> trying, trying to, to make a sex trying tape. to make yeah. a porn. To Daniel's credit, he never does it. 
He never uh, tries to make that happen. That's true. Well, he gets into the tub with her. Oh, yeah, tub- he does. tubby time. He does have some tubby time, but he, he turns it off first. <laughs> That's right, he does. And she's like, I want you to smash me. Oh, yeah, I want yeah. you to smash. Release yeah, yeah, has released yeah, yeah. the Kraken, and I die <laughs> and just turn the movie off. He's the Burger King. <laughs> take, take a break. That's it. right, he is the Burger King. He apparently owns some Burger King franchises, and that's why his house is so nice. Hilarious. I love yeah. it. Yeah, so what? We have Mika the, <laughs> day, the trader. day Trader, and we have Daniel the Burger King. And that explains well. Well, interestingly, you know, um, that comes up, and I don't, I'm not going to get into it, but it's funny thinking about the money, mm-hmm. who has the money, mm-hmm. because uh, in the third movie, that is a point of contention, the prequel. Oh, okay. Because the girls come from money. Because That's of, right, this, of deal. this deal. Yeah. And that, yeah, when they said that, when they discovered that, like, oh, uh, I think that their ancestors made a deal with a demon for wealth or power, I was like, that's how they're affording uh-huh. these houses. Okay. Yeah. It's not just those Burger King books. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, this family consists of Christy, who, like we said, is Katie's sister. And she has married uh, a dude a little bit older, not too much older, Daniel, who already had a daughter named Allie. Yes. So Christy is Allie's stepmother. The bloodline matters and as far as the plot goes. I really love Allie. I do. As she's a character. great. Yeah. She's such a great character. First scene. First scene yes. she's in, you immediately get that she's awesome. Yep. Because they're, they're, they just had a new baby, Hunter. And uh, I think it's Daniel recording. Uh-huh. And he's like talking to Allie. And Allie's like talking to her future baby brother. And she's like, you can't come in my room. But maybe I'll let you. And it'll be the coolest thing ever. And it's yeah. like, oh, cool. She's not just like a one note character. Yeah. yeah. And her relationship with the other characters I find really interesting. Because she has this stepmom, uh, uh, Christy, who's like, you know, the age difference there is smaller. It's almost the same age difference as the the dad and her, I think. Uh, the dad and Christy. And so like there is, she calls her by her name, mm-hmm. you know, which I, that's common with step parents, right? Yeah. I yeah. Think so. uh, but like, you know, sometimes there's one scene where she's like, Oh, I think she's getting a little crazy and hormonal, but it's still besides that a very, you know, loving, empathetic relationship. Mm-hmm. And then I also, they also have a nanny, Martine, Martine, who at first is, I'm like, is this just a stereotypical, like, uh, cause oh, she's yeah. Mexican, I'm mm-hmm. assuming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she's staging the house cause she realizes something's wrong with it. I'm like, Is I this was just a little like a... worried about that too. I was like, where are we going with Martine? But then she has that scene with Allie where like she, she's a person, not just a stereotype or a character. And she lives in their house. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, like an important distinction to make oh, is yeah. that Martine lives it in there she's their nanny she's their housekeeper i suppose um but because when when daniel throws her out mm-hmm. like he pa- she packs oh, back yeah. like she leaves yeah yeah um and i think that that that's another part of that family dynamic that's very interesting yeah, yeah. and i like that Allie. like we get a scene where Allie's mad at him uh mm-hmm. for kicking out martine because yep. like she, we saw how close they were yep. previously talking about like boys and stuff and that's such a cute scene with martine like dancing oh with yeah Allie. what yeah. is she like the like handsy oh yeah handsy handsy touchy <laughs> something like that yeah <laughs> yeah martine's very cute i like martine but yeah daniel tosses her out the second he smells that oh, sage yeah. he, he has a really zero tolerance yeah. policy for sage yeah that was i i would have <laughs> thought that'd be a, like okay this is your first strike and next you're getting fired but no well he does say that he's told her before oh I've, that's I've warned okay. you before or like you know you know I hate this stuff you mm-hmm. know I don't you know this is it now that we have the baby this is it mm-hmm. yeah because mm-hmm. yeah he's like the baby shouldn't uh-huh. be smelled which to like, be fair, fair yeah that <laughs> she's all the baby and like just watching that <laughs> yeah. it's like oh my god I also, um, going back to Allie real fast, I think it's really cool. It's just one line, but they introduce it here. And this is something that I've seen Supernatural franchises introduce, but never quite, you know, like play around with. And it's when Allie says, what if it's mom? Mm. Yes. Like that yeah. is so telling yeah. because, you know, you're you're dealing with, first of all, it tells us that the reason that Daniel is not married to his wife anymore is because mm-hmm. she died. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but the other part of it is like 
the openness to maybe the spirit isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Maybe this isn't necessarily a bad thing, which I think is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. and it's cool that we get, with the three main characters, three different uh, reactions yes. to the demon. Because yes. you have Christy, who's terrified of it, Daniel, who doesn't believe it, and Allie, who's like, I think I believe it, but it's not. maybe it's not maybe bad. Maybe it's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, that's that same kind of thing where it's like, I'm going to... Uh, continue to engage with the spirit not out of a malice or like teasing it like Mika in the first one right. but out of like a hope that comes up in uh, the new Annabelle movie too in and a yeah, very yeah, good way right. really well. it does yeah. it does yes oh yeah. <laughs> yeah I like too that um Allie and Christy have a very friendly relationship and they make jokes about her too being the evil stepmother right. and that's yeah. the only time that that trope ever comes up it's nice to see you know Mm -hmm. We don't have like, because I think it would be easy to write a version of the script where we have like these two conflicting, like, the, you know, two women fighting over the dad or, you know, this the like demon and the haunting is causing a rift between mm -hmm. these two girls. And it's like, but no, they they're pretty on each other's side this whole movie, even when they're laughing at uh, <laughs> at Christy when the fucking ladybug cleaner comes out yeah. of the pool. <laughs> it's like a vacuum cleaner, which at one point you see the dad wrestling with. I'm like, I had, a, I had a pool growing up and we had a vacuum cleaner like that. It wasn't a lady bug but like I don't know why you thing. just want to wrestle it like yeah. if you have a vacuum cleaner like that in your pool you're gonna wrestle it at some point and I don't <laughs> know what that that instinct is but yeah this like ladybug vacuum like crawls out of the pool. it's such a cool shot and I don't know how yeah. they did it I don't know either. that yeah. and also the baby being dragged out of the crib yeah. like what are, it looks like fucking labyrinth or something I know I don't know that baby gets dragged <laughs> yeah. across the crib and then it cuts away and it comes back and he's being dragged like up oh, the wait, side it of really the crib. was like baby toby effects in <laughs> labyrinth where it's like the room is sideways and toby's yeah. being dragged up the wall it's crazy because i like read uh i i was thinking okay they're doing night vision they're doing like mm -hmm. surveillance so they could have cg'd this baby yeah like there are moments where yeah. with the physicality where that but clearly could have been but uh it wasn't i looked it up and he said that the baby was an amazing actor it, like the was. director yeah. was like he, that baby, baby walked where we needed to walk mm -hmm. crawled where we needed to crawl like what uh, reacted whatever um but i think for that scene in particular i think when we cut away and we come back mm -hmm. it's a puppet okay that's oh. what i was thinking but it's a very good look it is puppet. Good puppet. well it's also fun. that it's using that medium to your advantage mm -hmm. right that's like the, the dark and then the swoosh it's a little bit fuzzy uh, yeah but yeah. it's a, yeah and that's the other thing that is a great thing about this movie is in that first one you have mika with a camera and they have the one camera and he sets it on a tripod every night but other than that it's all handheld in this movie the inciting incident is they come home and their their house is in oh my tatters. God, that's so scary. Like everything's just like torn apart and they assume it's a robbery, but really it's demon stuff, I guess. Uh, Cause Hunter's room is untouched and clean, but everything else is, you're looking at me like, is that revealed to be? It has to be. Movie? It has oh, to be. It's the opening scene in the third movie. It oh, has. like explained? Because okay. it, they leave it so unexplained. And also they make such a pointed line of the only thing that's missing is this necklace exactly. that Katie gave that's me. That's right. Exactly. Okay. What's the deal? But because of that, coming home and finding what they think is a robbery, they have a bunch of security yes, cameras it's installed. Brilliant. And it's, it's so yes. smart. So then we get a bunch of like, static shots of the house that we can always cut between. We got the pool in the backyard, the kitchen, the front porch. Mm -hmm. And it's so great to have that as like just a function of this found footage movie. No longer are we tied to one person's like. Yeah. Movements. And it's funny because that first shot and like the the shot of the bed and the door in the first mm -hmm. one is so scary. I'm wondering which of the because we have a, a few static shots in the second one. Is there one that like you found the most like when it cut to is there one that makes you feel the most dread because I think I have one that when oh, yeah. it cut to I was like oh I hate this one the most which Ooh. one is it I think it's the the shot of the we have like the couch in the foreground yes. and that's where like yes. the closet yes. is because it's so deep it's so deep it goes that back so far can, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah I think that's the one that made me feel most uncomfortable because that also has the basement door in the yep. shot yes. and that's yes. like one of the scarier things in this yeah movie, I was sorry I said door. it was the closet it's a basement oh yeah 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 uh, and also in the background of that shot 
not there's I think during the day it's I I was looking out for it I think it's like a thing of flowers I'm not sure but at night it looks like the side of a face and I yeah. hate it mm-hmm. it's like oh it just looks like someone's standing mm-hmm. back there I know so Hill House has me always looking in the yes. background for yes. faces now yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes totally but I like that setup quite a yeah, bit yeah I agree and Ooh. then yeah so we have the the static security cameras and a handheld camera to cut between and I just love that it's it's you know, with found footage movies, you always have to explain and justify why we have this yep. footage. Ooh, we and get this that does such a right good job off the of bat. it. I think we've noted we're like, yes, okay, we have our justification because you always it sucks. It's such a function of those kinds of movies mm-hmm. where you have to write in like, why are we still filming? You always have to have the line, don't stop recording, no <laughs> yeah. matter what you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this, we have security cameras. They also have a dog, oh, Abby, Abby, who's a great dog actor good too. Dog they acting. lucked out yeah. with dogs and babies here. They really did. Yeah. And ooh, yeah. Ooh, there's a shot they cut to where it's like Hunter standing up and Abby's like growling at yes. something that you can't see. Yeah, I think it's the baby monitor Ew. that they're looking at. But yeah. yeah, like that dog is at attention, this so German good. shepherd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also, did you notice how... Uh, you know, save for Hunter and Daniel, they're just, it's all girls. Yeah. Oh, I had oh, that. Yeah, Abby, you know, yeah, I just, sure. I don't feel like that's an accident. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's, it's intentional. That's one of my all time favorite. Um, I don't know if it's like a trope or just movie, like anything in a movie where it's a family, where it's a dad who's overwhelmed by a family of women and girls is like my favorite shit. Like mm-hmm. I love Pride and Prejudice. I love the little mermaid. I'm trying to think the conjuring mm-hmm. has a whole family, oh, yeah. like the dad and all the girls. And, <laughs> I love it. Anytime that that's well, a that's thing. your family because it's your dad and just all that's girls, true. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that was something I wanted to just touch on briefly. Is like, I I also get why you know this it's uh, this is a movie with a family that I recognize. Mm. Meaning like um you know I I had friends who this family was their family Mm -hmm. and uh, growing up with them and I would go to houses that looked like this house and like you know and so I, I absolutely think that that matters meaning like I get the idea of this movie not being scary to certain to people if if they're like what is this I but the fact for me personally I'm saying that I responded to it because I'm like oh that I know that. I I feel that. I grew up with that. That is me. This is a movie that's talking to me. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Because, yeah, that's what we were saying about that first one, how, like, our our families and houses weren't necessarily like that, but we had friends who we would go over and they would look like that. That's like their house. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I like... You know what? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I like, too, that even though we are screaming at the tv this whole time at daniel because it's same with mika in the first one it's like oh man you are you're ruining everything you're just so you're so stubborn but you still like him i like daniel and i like like you you it sucks when uh when everyone gets all fucked up at the end of this like yeah it's brutal too it's very um like unceremonious uh death especially for daniel daniel just gets he his gets fucking neck bad. broken like a real just, like, bad. in the air and he jumps yeah, yeah. It's like a wrestling Icky. move gone wrong. Yeah, man. Right. It's fucked up. Uh, there is a, actually, you know what? There is another male character, Allie's boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, you're he's right. so funny for you're the right. two seconds he's in this. Yeah, I like how he's you know he's a horny teen, but he's not like a dick. No, he's playful and she's into it. He's but just yeah. like a neighborhood kid. Yeah, he's a knucklehead. And apparently, you know, they're close enough to where she's always calling him and updating him, right. and like uh, asking him for you know comfort and security, which it, but like the Ouija board scene, oh, God. very <laughs> it's good. So funny. It's yeah. so necessary at that point in the movie too. This is like, I think this movie does a good job balancing funny with the scary, especially when, you know, like it's a common complaint for these movies that it it can be slow. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's boring, but, you know, we've got like a few nights rolling by. It's pretty slow. We've got like one night and we see a door kind of move. And, you know, we're. Yeah, that's what I'll say is that first act of this movie, it feels like it's night, little thing cut away back to day yeah. and then yeah, not a just, lot of big scares yeah. yeah but that's why i love this little scene with the ouija board because it breaks up that kind of uh that like monotony of the it's night then day the night then day and then mm. we have yeah, the ouija board where he spells that it's like what do you want <laughs> <laughs> pussy pussy <laughs> and then i i think it's so funny that they never um explicitly say like the board and and the boyfriend's like oh i'm not i'm really not moving at this time and it starts spelling out hunter obviously right. but they never 
explosive and be like, oh, wait, it's spelling hunter. Right. <gasps> yeah. It wants hunter. They're laughing. Because it just gets to hunt. Hunt. And, and then... she, Allie's like, oh, pussy hunt. It wants to go on a pussy hunt. And that's like the end of the scene. And I think that's such a good. I do like how uh, another thing that this movie does is it plants seeds and it expects you to fill in the blanks. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the tension. Of course, you can you can rely on the visual tension. But for me, a lot of the tension also comes from like the little clues, the little just the li- and and the choice to cut mm-hmm. like when she, he's at whatever T or E or whatever, yeah. but but not to not to hammer it. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh no, yeah. yeah, like it cuts to the baby's room footage, and that's mm-hmm. enough. It's yeah, like, oh, yeah, hunt. We, yes. oh, hunter, that's and right. <laughs> that adds to the realism of being a found footage because you can't in a found footage have these characters talking like they're movie characters, like. You know, we have a line about, oh, you don't want to end up like mom. And then they drop it because Mm -hmm. if they're real people and this is found footage of real people, those characters would not need to elaborate any further. You know how mom had this stuff happen to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And same with uh, uh, Allie saying, well, what if the ghost is is mom? And that's it. You know, we, we assume we know something happened to her. We get what they're what you know the fan the family's relationship is now because at first I was confused I wasn't sure like I got that she was the stepmom eventually but it just paints a clearer picture of what and yeah they do it so naturally because like in that first shot with Allie she's like uh talking to the camera which is her younger brother and she's like my brother from another mother and it's like was that a joke or oh no okay so it's a different mom that's all done really well in this Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it might, it, it, I think that's a kind of an underrated thing about like a found footage done well is you have to be, you have to write these things so deftly or at least outline them so deftly because a lot of these are kind of improvised, but you have to really work that stuff in where it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm watching fake people. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they get, it is crucial. I mean, in all movies, you don't want your characters to appear as characters, but it's crucial in found footage yes. yeah. that they seem like real people. And this does feel like a real family to me. Mm-hmm. Like they, I believe that that little girl is Daniel's daughter. Yeah, yeah. for sure. They yeah, have their good relationship chemistry. is yeah. great too. They're great together. Yeah. They're yeah. so natural and they fit so nicely. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, there's just like that teasing, and I like that it's not uh, a more stereotypical like mad at each other all the Mm -hmm. time like they get a little bit annoyed but it's mostly love and it's great and and I think that's important for the storytelling is it's a family that likes each other Mm -hmm. because what you see happen is the unraveling of a family that likes each other like Mm -hmm. I think if if they took a note from the first movie because I've heard the criticism that Mika is so unlikable Mm -hmm. um, you know I think that they really do endear you to these people more Mm -hmm. Um, and and you know it's a family that hopefully you care about so it's more scary definitely I just see in your notes the the scene about or the scene with a giant poop being left in the toilet and I (laughs) I did it is a single line with a single word poop just poop I I love the idea though that because I haven't seen the third one I'm like maybe the third one will explain what was in the toilet like what was so (laughs) scary so we didn't you know it's they don't, yeah, they don't Mega show the dump, poop. But we don't see it. Maybe it's something important to the <laughs> plot. It is very, like, out of nowhere. It's, it reminds me of the first one where she's, we hear Katie screaming and there's a spider in the bathroom. Right. But this one oh, is yeah. like, oh, no, there's a scary poop in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, as far as the scares go, I w- yeah, Ooh, like yeah. I said, the the first act kind of, and that's maybe why this is the least well regarded because I think if you're just looking at it for scares as opposed to maybe the believability of mm-hmm. the actors and the character mm-hmm. relations, uh, you might be let down a little bit, especially if you've just watched the first one right. because this does a lot of the same scares at yeah. first. Where in the first one, a door moving is like, oh God, and this mm-hmm. one it happens, we're like, yeah, we saw it. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's we get it. We know. Yeah. I was thinking about about that because especially if this is such a continuation of the first one and we're dealing with the same demon the same um like supernatural forces you then in fact like the first movie unknowingly to Oren Pally at the time and uh, you know the studio eventually like they don't realize they are constructing a set of rules that then they're right. making the sequel and like oh we have to abide by what the demon can do in this first one because if all of a sudden, if in this one the demon is doing crazy shit, it makes no sense right. because it's kind of a prequel. Like, why yeah. would the demon pump his brakes? 
Exactly. Or her There's baby's a, a girl. I don't know. Pools. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I had that thought. So it's, it, I wonder how limiting that felt when they were writing it, realizing they have to stay within the same mm-hmm. realm of like, yeah, like parlor trick type scare. But can we all agree on the best scare? Yeah. Like, I don't know. What is it? Oh, uh, I I think that kitchen scare. I, kitchen scene is yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah. Because yeah. like, uh, it's after, I think it's after we have like the pan falling a couple of times, yeah. which is also good. And I still don't know. I still don't quite know how they made it fall a second time because uh, it's just the one cool, long take yeah. but then later in the kitchen christy's there and just all yeah. the cabinets blow open i think yeah i think what i love so much about that one is you've seen the first one and all of the second movie leading up to this all of the scares happen in one part of the screen so like uh-huh. everything is like yeah it's visually yes. like isolated yes. It's, yes. Little, it's a pot it's a the shadow on the door it's like one thing happening in one part of the screen but in this one you have this <laughs> kitchen where all of the cabinets fly open and all this shit fly, and it's like every year it's overwhelming visually yeah. and i think it's so it's to, so good to make wide shots scary yeah mm-hmm. like that's no joke like, yeah that's hard to do for and sure I, and i think that scare also benefits from you being so used to the budget of the first one where you're like i know that they can only do certain that's, things for yes. scares yeah. and in this one clearly they had a better budget it yeah. looks better and then to be able to do Whatever mechanical rigging so they did cool. for that yeah. is so awesome. The emotional beat too is so good too because Christy, the actress, is so scared. Yeah. yeah. And it's a by the way, we're talking about midsummer. That's a daylight scare. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, that's it right. Is. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, uh I I th- I think that the uh, the the scare works. Yes, it's jarring. Mm-hmm. And yes, it is a bigger budget scare, which is super important. But I also think that we've gotten to a point with that character where her reaction is just so like, oh. Yeah. And then running back and like being like, no, I can face it. She doesn't have to say that. But you see her go back and shut all the doors yeah. and she just she, like, like cleans it up. Yeah, like, like I can do this. And it's just, it's so, it's such a good character beat. Yeah. That you wouldn't necessarily think you would find. Yeah. Like I think she even, maybe I'm misremembering, but I think she's even crying a little bit too. I yeah. Think it's like, yeah. Because she runs like, away and she's like, leave cr- me alone. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's, it's a really like, yeah, man. Yeah. I really that like that That one's so good. I'm trying to think of other ones in this so one that the I love. So the one that, one that um, I love, that is, yes, that is definitely <laughs> like the best, probably the best one in the whole movie. But um, I love the scene where Allie is sleeping on the couch mm. and um, mm-hmm. the the sh- the sound and the shadow just eclipses her, gets very loud. And then she like sits up and, and gasps. And for whatever reason, like when I was watch- rewatching it, that was the one that made me go, oh, yeah, because like the TV turns to static yeah, that's prior right. to that. And when she comes out of it, the TV yeah. comes back on yes. regular. So she probably didn't even know it was yes. staticky. That's a good one, yeah, too. Yeah, I like sound that one design. A lot. Yeah. Also, maybe, too, because I that's a moment where I'm like, that's me. I've been a nanny. I've, you know, been in a big house that with watching a kid mm-hmm. that, you know, I and, and not knowing. Who, it's just it's not your mm-hmm. house. And even when it is, when it's a quiet, big house. Yeah, that's scary. And so I definitely was and I fall sleep on the couch all the time <laughs> so i definitely related to that one a lot yeah, oh, I, yeah another cool. really creepy moment that i think the movie doesn't even sell as creepy as i find it is when ally has the camera and it's late in the movie and it's after i think christy has been possessed because yeah we see christy get pulled yeah. downstairs yeah. Ooh, which is good. great and yeah. it, they do a similar effect in the first one but not like all the way downstairs yeah. like this and uh christy winds up pulled into the basement and and then they do the time lapse thing and you see like she's in that basement for over an hour before she comes out yeah. and is very obviously changed. But then Allie has the cameras walking around and uh, she goes into the baby's room and she's like creeping the door yes. open. And then Hunter is just like hanging out the crib like, what up? Yeah. But it's just like toddlers are creepy, man. Yes, they are. They're they are little very, people it's the creepiest age. who can't communicate <laughs> what they're experiencing to you. But like if it's like a, a pet, if, the, if a toddler yes. just like starts looking at something and you're like, what are yeah. you looking that, at? That happens in the movie. And I thought the same thing. My dog, well, when, he, when my dog is just staring at nothing and I'm like, what do you see? Yeah. And it happens early in the movie where Christy's like, hey, pay attention to me. And mm-hmm. Hunter's just like, nope, yeah. I'm going to look over here. Or the dog trying to get into the basement early right. on. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah, sometimes, yes. yeah, we'll be in bed at night and Lucy will just be like huge eyes looking <laughs> at something. We're like, what? It's so What's freaking you weird. out, dude? I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Toddlers are a weird age because, yeah, they can't communicate communicate verbally but also they're 
old enough now to where we know they have some kind of inner life and they are (laughs) processing stuff and it's weird yeah it's great yeah i think you pointed out during the movie um speaking of hunter uh he like gets out of his crib one night i think that's when he was like being like gets dragged up the side and then he's just walking around at night Mm -hmm. and uh he Such good baby acting. He's so good. Such a good baby. Then he goes down into the basement, and you noticed, and I wouldn't have noticed unless you pointed it out that it, it cuts. So he goes into the basement, and the basement door shuts, and then we cut, and he's like crawling, crawling up the stairs. And you noted that six minutes had gone by. Yeah, the mm. shot what of him going into the basement yeah. is eleven eighteen, and then it cuts right away to him crawling up the stairs is eleven twenty four. Uh, it's like what happened in that basement, dude? Out, right? <laughs> Oh, oh, and boy. then I'm trying to, I'm guessing the, um, the stuff on the basement door that Christy, Christy, I must, yeah, like wrote or oh, like the craw- scratch- or the scratches. scratches. Yeah. I thought it spelled m- like M E L K like milk. Oh, she was just thirsty. Yeah. Or okay. <laughs> she just really wants to go to milk in Austria. I, I think, think I made a Austria. note of about that. I one. was like, oh, is that a thing? I don't know. Yeah. Kind of like Adina or whatever from the. Uh, Ouija board in the first one, just oh, like okay. you know, bringing stuff into the lore. I don't know. Yeah, when the, and uh, I'm excited for the third one to explain some of the stuff that the sisters talk about because mm-hmm. uh, Christy is the younger sister, right? Yes. Katie's older, Correct. and so Christy is like, I don't really remember it, and Katie is like, Well, I do. And uh, yeah, we had weird people coming to the house, which I'm like, oh, I'm excited. Yeah, what? Yeah. That was a weird kind of throwaway. <laughs> yeah. Lots of they definitely know in this one versus the first one. Like we're gonna make we more have a of franchise. These. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and I think that you know that's part of the reason why the third one uh, is maybe better reviewed. Also, is because when you watch the second one, you go, okay, there's there's a bigger world here. But I didn't know that at first, but now I know. And so when you go into the third one, you do have questions answered. Now mm-hmm. that said, the third one being a prequel stands alone, which mm-hmm. is great. So you Ooh, can okay. you can watch it without. Um, but uh, but yeah, there it's 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 a very 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 smart thing that they did, and it's another reason why the. F- I'm so disappointed um, in the fourth and fifth movie. You know, in the in the chronology, um, because. They set up this incredible world and they really play on it in the in the third movie, especially going back to a prequel. So it's like you have so much time that you can play with Mm -hmm. inside this world with these women. Um, And it's just such a bummer that the fourth and fifth one are just like, I'm so curious. I'm really curious about the third one because I think. During our review of the first one, I I was trying to guess what the second one would be about, and I'm like, is it their childhood? Because how are they filming mm-hmm. exactly? That? But is the is the third one their child? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. how? Well, there's big VHS recorders. It's the big VHS recorder. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. It's I'm, 80s. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. know why in my head I'm like, we're going to the 1960s. Like, I'm, I'm, I I'm, know. I'm just. I can't math out how old they are. <laughs> no, okay, it's yeah, perfect. That, it's like right ooh. the earliest it can be to believably have a family with like a consumer oh, video especially, camera. Especially, I mean, you know, 80s dad. We Oh, we right. can have at-home cameras now. I'm going to record everything because <laughs> yeah. um, I'm a dad in the 80s. Are you guys doing... <laughs> Four, five, and marked ones, or no? Just... We're just doing three and four because I didn't even know that Ghost Dimension was part of the okay. thing. We're so doing now these I numerical kind of paranormal I, activities. I kind of want to. Um, I mean, spoil the fifth movie. It's not really, but they introduce at the end of the fifth movie. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say it. Ghost Dimension. It, yes. Okay. At the end of Ghost Dimension. They introduce time travel. <gasps> Fuck yes! Shame. No, we gotta review all these now. So, oh, I know. Now, now this is the end of the fifth movie. Yeah. Okay. So like, don't get too much into no, it. No, 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 I've no, never no. Seen it. They, they, but they introduce playing with time. Okay. And interesting. I, As franchises and do. I have wanted because in this movie in Paranormal Two, they talk about like, what if Christy and um, you know, Allie says, what if Christy and Katie's great grandmother like made a deal and whatever. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that there is this legacy of women that goes back generations, when in the fifth one, when they introduced playing with time, I was like, 
Well, that's how you go back to the 60s. Dude, yeah. that'd that's be cool. how yeah, you kind okay. of, if you wanted to continue the mythology, oh, which man. why would why would a major studio like invest? <laughs> this, that would be literally just a movie for me because I really <laughs> do want to like explore this mythology. Oh man, but I love the idea now, especially if it's like a great, great grandmother. Like let's do Dust Bowl found footage. <laughs> like let's let's take a camera and get in the time machine or however or, we're traveling in time. speaking of Rosemary's baby Ooh. like rosemary's baby style manhattan yeah like, like what that. is great 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 grandmother up to yeah because yeah. i i don't think we've ever fully articulated uh what they discover but it's that christy and katie's great grandma they uh that's say. what ali suggests that's yes. what she yeah which made a pact with sense. a demon uh, for wealth and power in exchange for the soul, I guess, the, of the firstborn the, yes, the male, male heir. heir. Yeah. And then she realizes she goes through the t- uh, the timeline and the family tree and is like, Hunter is the first male baby on through that bloodline since like the 30s. Yeah. I'm yes. curious how she has that information. <laughs> yeah, though. right. How her, she has her stepmom's family tree going yeah. back yeah. to the 30s. Maybe, I mean, maybe previously, because what worse, yeah, we, we had like Ancestry. Ancestry.com at this Would have been point. around, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I remember one time when I was about Allie's age, uh, or the character of Allie's age, I remember my mom got very into like, I need to figure out our family tree. Yeah. My, I, my, me, me and my yeah. mom are really into that. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, and and it wasn't even about like, uh, you know, the blood, the the spitting in the tube kind of thing. It was she <laughs> just like she like wrote everything down and mm-hmm. like, and so I mean I don't know if that's a thing that every family does, but like it also one more example of of for me uh, when I I was just like yeah this this feels too familiar. This is yeah. like you know what I mean. Like yeah. I know these people. Yeah. It's weird. I think it's it is very dependent on like where people's families are from too. Because my family is French Canadian and the French and the French Canadians are obsessed with record keeping. Mm. So it's easy. So like, I don't know where your family's from, but that could just play into like, you know what? Let's do it. Cause yeah. we have all this stuff. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. Maybe Christie's French Canadian. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's so, yeah. That's interesting. I'm, oh man, I just want to like watch all the rest of these now, but I mean, I'm telling you like, you're getting the highlight reel. <laughs> I mean, I, I, the fourth one is truly, in my opinion, just useless. Oh like, wow! Like oh, man. nothing. Damn. Talk about nothing happening. Nothing oh, happens. Useless. Yeah. Useless is like the most brutal. Yeah, like, type it, of movie. Is, I'm so intrigued. So but damn. I mean, I would definitely say like if you like this style of movie, watch uh, the the marked ones, which is the spinoff, mm-hmm. especially too because Chris Landon is becoming such a name in the genre. And he mm-hmm. directed that one, Correct. right? Yeah, that cool. is his direct feature directorial debut. Nice. Yes. So, um, and then the fifth one, which is Ghost Dimension, is just kind of once again, it's meh. Like it's yeah. not as useless as the fourth one <laughs> but it's also like too little too late like where have you been and also this answers nothing they're like all your questions will be answered uh, and I'm oh, like no that's frustrating. no they is, don't is the marked ones that's the first one too I think you said where it's the first like starring family where it's not like rich white Correct. people yeah yes. which is okay. also cool okay because yeah these yeah these people in these movies are very comfortable yep. oh, <laughs> yep. yeah very comfortable yeah. I did love all the little callbacks in this one uh-huh. just to, the, to like because we just watched the first one so if you're like to, you know to all the people in the theater who were like I know the first one inside out we've got Katie at one point says something about you need a room in your house to do bead stuff or whatever oh, yeah. I was like fuck yeah bead time, bead time. Yeah. I'm still in the process of easing him into the fact that we live together and therefore the house should represent the both of us yeah, yeah but it's well, just yeah. the, the both of us <laughs> right? like a cool. give and take like you have your little beading thing or whatever it is and then I have my area you know I'm a lot more excited now to watch the rest of these and I think after talking through this second one and like I, I respect it a lot as something that adds to the first one and I think yeah I think this movie it could have easily been you're you're right it could have easily been all right we got another family and there's another demon Mm -hmm. let's just do the first one again and right yeah in fact after after this discussion I I guess I would still put the first one higher, but sure. like this definitely got moved up a lot. Yeah, they're they're really nice, just companions. Yeah, you know, like I like that they're timeline wise 
almost adjacent. Mm-hmm. At I least there is lot. overlap. It's it's a it's a way. It's so creative in yeah. the scripting and in the crafting of this installment, and then a future, a potential future. Like I I just think it's very ambitious yeah. for for a franchise that could be nothing you know yeah. or it could just be whatever and it has the name and we put it out there I and did. i wonder if that drew influence from saw because yeah. saw that being the previous titan horror series and one of my favorite things about that series is how fucking yeah, like, yeah. the storyline is no we are not just a new I, movie that's I why jigsaw it, pissed yeah. me off so much because yeah. he continued it but it was new yeah, shit. yeah 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 but yeah those first like seven movies are just like one story yeah and i did I love in that this paranormal for, in, uh, I, not really knowing what the second movie was about only knowing it was connected in some way i did when Katie shows up. I was like, oh, fuck. She did, yeah. I was like, yeah. Oh, shit. I had no idea that that's what we were doing. I I didn't didn't know when this was supposed to be set. Oh, yeah. I guess you don't realize that Mm. Christy is her sister until she's at that front door. That's so fun. It's very cool. And the timeline. Oh, yeah. And in the first scene with Katie, Mika's not there. And they ask where where Mika is. And she's like, oh, he's not feeling well. So you're like, is Is this this after she killed him? Yeah. But it's not. It's a good misdirect. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good misdirect. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. And then in the very end of this movie, in case anyone's watching who hasn't seen it uh katie does come after the events of the first film possessed katie comes and takes hunter right she kills uh daniel and christy takes hunter and then a card says uh ali came back from a school trip Mm -hmm. found her parents dead yep the next movie we have to travel in katie's labyrinth and rescue the baby i saw (laughs) them puzzles it's like our labyrinth reboot Uh (laughs) uh-huh yeah turn back (laughs) ali Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, I think that do- that amount does it. Thank you so much. Yes, oh, my gosh. Thank you. you for, like, you're, like, the atlas of the, <laughs> the paranormal no. pool party Thank right you. now, just carrying the... <laughs> no, you guys, like, <laughs> let me crash your paranormal pool no, party. No, just cannonballed right yeah, 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 I was like, I basically came around the corner and was like, did someone say paranormal activity <laughs> pool party? Hi, can I be on your show? Um, but I do really just, I love this trilogy. I think it's very well done. I think it's better than anybody gives it real credit for because it's so easy to be dismissive and be like, oh, it's found footage, bleh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just nothing happens, bleh. Mm-hmm. Um, But the creativity involved with not only the crafting of the story, but the gags is like, is, and and no spoilies, but three has a great one, which yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> which is what I'm talking about. And, um, but there, yeah, I just think these, these this franchise is so clever. Yes. And, um, and I love that it rewards the fans by doing mythology, but also rewards just regular moviegoers for, you know, showing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, where should people look for you online? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Clark Wolf, Clark with an E, Wolf with an E, and you can listen to my podcast, which Chelsea was on, and yeah. we talked about Spinal on. Tap. Yeah. yeah. And James, you'll have to come on. I'd love to have you. Sure. Yeah. Because what's what's the premise? Um, it's, it's so it's um a, you can pick any movie off of any AFI list. Oh, so that's it right. can be the you know cool. the traditional list, but it can also be laughs or thrills yeah. or scores or villains. Here, here's hoping Billy Madison is on one of those <laughs> AFI lists. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I picked Spinal Tap off the laughs. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so yeah, so you can listen to that and much more. It's oh, what's a, the podcast called? It's called Sending the Wolf. S E N D I N G the Wolf. So nice. thank you guys so much name. for having me. This oh, was so thank you fun. so yeah, much you. for coming on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James Twitter and Instagram. Check out that Instagram. Uh, Chelsea and I visited the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. Yes. The, I where, saw those posts. They I know. Were so good. I love. I think the picture of me grabbing yeah, you is my so most liked good. picture. Yeah, so, so good. Oh man, fun. if you live anywhere near that place and are thinking about going, or you're in the area, just it's so fun because the staff there they know what's up. Know. We, <laughs> we showed up in our stupid matching t-shirts, and they're like, "We can help you take all the pictures." Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they know what's up. That's they'll awesome. take you on like a, they'll they'll point out little things, and mm-hmm. there are still little marks left over from filming, and you know you, that house has clearly been used, and where you know where they tore down sets that were in there and stuff it's very cool so yeah that's the uh, grand central cafe now yeah yeah love it yeah kingston texas yeah kingsland love it. King- kingsland yeah kingsland texas cool uh we'll be back with paranormal three next mm-hmm. week but until then i'm james i'm chelsea and that's clark Hi. and this has been the dead meat podcast Yay. Yay.